yes, we are here continuing the Lord of the Rings interplay game. Uh, for those of you who saw the stream, the public stream uh, on uh, Tuesday, I think the passage of time means nothing to me anymore. Um, we wandered around the Shire a bit and died a lot. Hello, Micah. Hello. We're going to look at the manual a little more because there were some things that I missed uh, in my manual searching last time. So Middle Earth Creatures. We got Sauron. I don't think we're going to find him in the Shire. I don't think we'll get to Sauron today except for in the death screen again. Orcs. Now, this is a very uh, furry orc here. It's a very... Um, caveman-like orc. Trolls. I like the ram horns on the troll's head. Here's what's fun. Vampires. Though no vampires have been seen since the end of the first age of Middle-earth, it does not mean that they do not still exist. Vampires are sorcerers or witches who can assume the form of a giant bat. Of these creatures, little is known. We may get some vampires in this game. I, I'm, I'm just saying Joel Schumacher's Lord of the Rings would be an interesting movie. Frodo of the Nine Fingers and the Dracula does not have as many patrons as usual. Uh, you can say that again. It has a dwarf, it looks like. Druin. Has anyone seen that fur-footed thrice-cursed burglar? Bring me Baggins. I came seeking my lost uncle. Now weariness makes it difficult to search. Find him and his axe. Ah. My uncle is in woods east of Baguette, searching for caves of dwarven treasures stolen from Moria. So I think we already found this dead uh, uncle. Trade to Druin. Axe. So all that was left was the axe. I feared my uncle had met an evil fate. For ending my quest, I will aid you in yours. I will join your fellowship. Sweet, we got a dwarf now. Can the dwarf actually use the axe? We got a dwarf and a pony. How many uh, people can we recruit? Because uh, I would love a fellowship of like 18. <laughs> Who's this? Greetings, worthy hobbits. Let me show you my wares. <laughs> Why did you give me an option of questioning this guy? The ale at the Green Dragon isn't as good as it used to be. You're just knocking your next door competition, buddy. Okay, shall we attempt... <laughs> just trying to walk into the water, whichever hobbit you are. Shall we see if we can uh, actually take on the big folk here? Now everyone has torches. Now it's an even playing field. Six points. Let's see what you can do, dwarf. <laughs> of course. Sam killed a human. Now Frodo has killed a human. The hobbits have blood on their hands, and I am here for it. Each hobbit has killed one human. <laughs> I am very excited. Did they drop any good loot? No? Okay. You uh, <laughs> you find yourself... To, we killed the big folk! <laughs> what are you doing, game? <laughs> Do I have to wait until night and try again? What What's going on? Okay, I'm going to let the sun set and then try to go in there again, because hopefully at night it'll remember that I already killed everybody. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, sure. You have come to a strange metal apparatus with dials and wheels. It appears to be controlled by pushing buttons and is making evil noises. Do you push buttons? Yeah, I push buttons. See paragraph number 82. Okay. The men get up with a start, and you realize they should get away before they get you. Crawling through a window, you safely escape into the night. Again, the men are already dead, but why split hairs? 
There's a lot of screaming behind you, drowned out by the roar of the huge engine as something explodes. So I think the game really didn't expect me to be able to actually kill the men. A sign reads closed for repairs. So I... So I destroyed a machine, and I guess I put uh, Sharky's whole uh, operation... I slowed it down a little bit. The pony didn't really fight in that battle, did he? I expected more pony. Okay, whatever. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and save because we defeated some big folk and destroyed a machine, and that's what Christmas is all about. Like, I understand graphical limitations of the time, but it would help if the terrain did not look so similar everywhere, and if every house didn't look exactly the same. I probably should, within the stream tonight, attempt to actually leave the Shire. And I know I'm going in the wrong direction for that. One of my issues with the Bakshi movie is that I cannot tell Mary and Pippin apart. Uh, so that's why I played this game where I cannot tell any hobbits apart. I should probably go back there and kill all the wolves, right? And then after that, make my way down to Farmer Maggot. Because that's just uh, how, the, how the story goes. And as much as they're adding things, I, I imagine... By and large, the story beats are going to happen. <laughs> now, wait a second. I'm going to try something here. Because Frodo can jump, in theory. First off, do I die if I just walk through this? Or Frodo Baggins is dead. Yes. Skills. Jump. With a mighty leap, you jump across the chasm and land safely on the far side. Okay, there's... Hopefully there's something here. I like how Frodo jumping can apparently carry the horse. What is going on here? Where are we now? Is this a ghost or just a weird graphic? Carved in stone, a mighty road king supports the roof with one hand and wields a sword with the other. Elven script surrounds a star-shaped depression. The standing king wears a brilliant ruby on his breast. Okay. Now let's try those uh, skills. The text reads, Star of the North, light of the future glory. When next I see thee, I shall know the hour of need has come. Okay. <laughs> the statue steps from the funeral fire in spirit form and draws its sword. I am charged to bring death to all cowards and defilers, it shouts. Thou canst serve two masters. So this is uh, some of uh, <laughs> some of that uh, biblical stuff Tolkien avoided using too uh, explicitly, but, well. <laughs> well, at least he's a cool new gra graphic. Okay, the pony's unconscious. Frodo hits Ghost King but does no damage. I don't think I'm going to survive this because I do not think uh, this is meant to be survived. <laughs> as curious as I would be to play the whole game without any, like, like to play the whole game without some of the main characters, I don't really want to. That could be an experiment for another time. <laughs> the pony is the ring bearer now. Honestly, Bill the pony as ring bearer. Not a terrible AU. Let's kill the wolf. Why are none of you close enough to kill a wolf? Pony versus wolf. Let's see it happen. Pony hits wolf for two points of damage. So far, the pony is the most effective. Everyone knows that the wolf's natural predator is the pony. Because, like, if how close you are to members of your own party affects if you can trade with them. That, that Pony kills wolf. Pony kills wolf. Pony kills wolf. Is, is there an endless supply of wolf and I already missed my chance to actually rescue this girl? One of the, you know, dumb phone apps I love is Mario Run. And I wish I could adjust the volume on that game relative to the podcast I'm listening to because I like the music on Mario Run, but I also like to be listening to other things on my phone while I'm playing a, a mindless game. 
And it's like, I wish I could tell it like, I'm not trying to turn the whole phone's volume down. I'm just trying to turn the music on this game down so I can still hear Paul F. Tompkins over it. Maybe Green Hill Country is where I will find an elf. So I'm going to cross this bridge, go south for a ways, explore the west to the best of my ability, and then go east until I reconnect with Farmer Maggot. Weird that uh, Cotton's Farm is on the other side of Buckland Ferry. That seems incorrect. <laughs> that seems non-canonical, but uh, hey, maybe it'll help if we ask for directions. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. And if I take two more steps in this direction, we'll just keep zigzagging back and forth, Mr. Frodo. Well, this is different. A black rider. He glides out of the forest, mounted on a black horse, and advances towards you. His red eyes glow balefully as he draws closer. This might be the part where Gildor shows up. I might actually find a fucking elf. What a, yes, what a sound like mingled song and laughter breaks the aura of the evil. The rider straightens, mounts, and fades into the dark woods. <laughs> Would have been cool to see that, but I, I, I get that we have limited animation of the time. You hear clear elven voices. The elves begin to sing. One elf, singular. Gilthoniel, O oh, Elbreth, clear are thy eyes and bright thy breath. The elves continue to sing as you follow them back to their camp in the woods. <laughs> Look at this, uh, squirmy paced Gildor. We are safe here, though elves rarely give advice. Ask and I shall try to help you. Do not speak of it again until you reach the house of Elrond. Never use it. It serves only the one who made it. I can tell you nothing useful with this. There is a little good news in these dark times, in your darkest hours. May Elbereth protect thee. Her name will protect you in times of need. The servants of the enemy fear her. That Gandalf should be laid, built roads ill. Leave without delay, but take friends that you can trust. You will need help. Like, you know, all these characters we've already accumulated. So now I have the Elbereth spell, I guess. I can call on Elbereth's name in times of trouble. Well, we found Gildor, so, you know, we got to the part that most adaptations cut out. And that's not nothing. See paragraph number 50. More paragraphs. A man steps out of the trees. He is a tall, handsome human dressed in brown clothes that look travel-worn, though they have been recently washed. He has a rough demeanor, as though he has lived all of his life in the forest, even though he is rather handsome. It is unusual to see hobbits wandering alone in this part of the Shire, especially in such dangerous times. There are elves roaming this country, elves, and far worse than elves. He notes your skeptical expression and takes a deep breath. You need protection on the road ahead. I can help you. I offer you my services. Do you accept this man into the fellowship? I guess I have no reason not to, because maybe this is Strider. It's Hawkeye. He bows and says, my, my friends call me Hawkeye. I'm played by Alan Alda. Or I'm played by Jeremy Renner. There's no way of knowing. Oh, an orc, okay. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch Orc. Yeah, everything you're referencing ends up being part of this game somehow because, you know, there just wasn't quite enough lore in Lord of the Rings yet already. They needed to add lore from other franchises. Hawkeye says, I know a place where we can heal our wounds before the journey continues. He takes you to his cave. Okay, if this, like, fully boosts our health, I am all on board for this happening. So yeah, Hawkeye joins the party now. <laughs> the cave is just like a hole in the ground. As you enter the cave, an alarmed expression comes on Hawkeye's face. Suddenly he shouts, run now. He draws the sword. They're coming, take the Northwest Passage and keep going. His words are cut short as he prepares for breath. Hawkeye is leaving the fellowship. Give his stuff to the pony. You have my sword, and you have my bow. 
Ronnie, you hear a Hawkeye cry to Elbreth. There is a clash of swords and what sounds like a death scream. Then all is still, except for an intense feeling of evil. So they introduce this character only to kill him off immediately. Somewhere nearby, a frantic bird chirps, Gandalf, Gandalf. Okay, so this is a different cave. Gandalf is an ugly bird. Come on, a spider killed your uncle, so, uh, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I'm just now realizing that uh, the radioactive spider killed the uncle here, so uh, whatever superpower you have, it, 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 it's just completing all the, all the um, Spider-Man mythos. I don't know, I'm, I'm, there's something there. We'll workshop it all together, everybody. <laughs> and the dwarf kills the spider. Paragraph 196. The brown bird spreads its wings. For a moment, you have the impression of a face, like Gandalf's, maybe a bit younger. A voice comes from the bird, speaking the common tongue. Oh, is Radagast controlling this bird? If you have not found the elves, seek them at night on the roads leading to Green Hill Country. Ask them about Elbereth, for her name has the power to protect you, as will the name of Luthien. But that one you will not learn there. <laughs> okay, so that's already been taken care of. The old forest is long and hard and dangerous, but the enemy will not follow you there. Seek the master of the forest. Call for help in dire need. Gandalf! Gandalf! Then the bird is gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is basically telling us uh, when we're in the old forest, we'll call for help and Bombadil will show up. But, uh... No, jump, not jump, climb. Well, that sure was a roundabout way of getting to the points we need to get to. You have entered Farmer Maggot's farm. It brings back bad memories of being chased by dogs during boyhood mushroom raids. Ah, boyhood mushroom raids. Three huge dogs growl at you as you pass by, warning you to keep away from the bedroom. Farmer Maggot is sitting in the living room, looking worried. Is this going to be another, like, sick child side quest? See, paragraph number 24. I had a feeling Farmer Maggot would be a C paragraph, sort of, uh... There was a big man from foreign parts asking for Mr. Baggins. I told him to go back to where he came from double quick or I'd set the dogs on him. Then he gave a sort of hiss that might have been a laugh and spurred his great horse at me. And I jumped away only in the nick of time. After that, I found my boy in the lane and I don't know what happened to him. I was going off to get the healer, but I don't want to leave him. Will you go to the village and bring him back? He's not far and I'm very worried. He isn't waking up. Well, I should have known it wouldn't have been as simple as just getting to Farmer Maggot's place and then getting the plot rolling. <laughs> You have reached the Buckland Ferry, where Mary Brandybuck has been waiting for you. We know you're going to leave the Shire, he says, and we intend to stay with you until the bitter end. <laughs> oh, so that wasn't a C paragraph. This whole bit of uh, exposition. <laughs> so he's just Pippin, but with dreads? Take me with you. So we could probably just move on to Buckland at this point. But uh, I feel bad leaving Farmer Maggot in the lurch, even if I don't feel bad letting that child just in the middle of the woods on her own. Also, I would like to say hello to uh, the Cottons. Mary doesn't get a last name because they can't fit Brandy Buck in the thing. Does Mary have any special skills? Boat. Mary is a transformer <laughs> and can uh, just become a boat when needed. Mary is Turbo Teen, but the uh, Aqua version. You know, gang, I miss Hawkeye. Hawkeye was a breath of fresh air. Wouldn't it be nice if something happened and we wouldn't have to search so long? And wouldn't it be nice to find the healer? I wonder what was the decision-making process for the developers deciding which houses would have nobody in them and which houses would have hobbits who only say go away and uh, do not further the narrative or gameplay at all? Are you the healer? Milo Burrows. 
Visitors, wonderful, make yourself at home. I heard such interesting news. News. I hear that strange folk have been seen near Hobbiton of late, though that's to be expected in those parts. You know how those folk can be. Certainly not like those sturdy buckling hobbits. Okay. Um, look, I don't know where I was supposed to find Keeler, but I feel like it should have been by now. I also am curious about the decisions to why some of these hobbits get names and some of them don't. And why one is Pippin's sister for no discernible reason. You're at the healer's home! A wizened old hobbit sitting in a chair. I see no chair here. I see there is a need for me. I will join you, says the healer. Let's take a look at our healer. I'm guessing he's the same old hobbit design. Yep. It's Gapper, it's Maggot, it's all of them. He is the healer, and that's all that he is, but only when the plot demands it, so I cannot have him just heal me, no uh, questions asked. Okay, so it was the closest house to Maggot's farm. I just, like, it could not be seen from the main pathway, so that was uh, confusing, layout designers. <laughs> um... I have notes for this game that is, you know, 31 years old. I suspect we're going to have to see another paragraph. Also, I think paragraph number one is a decoy paragraph because uh, I just noticed this. A palantir, you exclaim. You laugh to think that one of these legendary seeing stones has lain here in the Shire all these ages. With awe, you carefully wipe the dust from its crystalline surface. As you do, a faint rosy glow takes hold within the palantir. The glow gives way to a misty, red-tinged vision of a dark figure sitting upon a ceramic stool, reading a scroll. Suddenly, the dark one looks up, his single flaming red eye glaring with malice. Tss, he hisses. Read not those paragraphs for which you have been given no instructions. There is a special face in Mordor for the likes of you. And with that, the vision disappears. Yet even as, it's fa e yet even as it fades, you hear a muttered, You think being a dark lord would grant you some privacy, but no... That is a very funny decoy paragraph. Do I dismiss the healer? Is that what I do? Or do I go with the healer into the room? Hold on, let me let me recruit the healer again. Nope. Okay, so I may have fucked this up already. Nope, screw this. I'm, I'm I'm not going to fight Farmer Maggot's dogs. I will kill a lot of innocent animals, but I will not kill uh, Maggot's dogs. Even if they look exactly like the wolves. <laughs> and Pittman is unconscious. And the dog just ran up the side of the house. And Pippin's dead. <laughs> Let's um load game here. Talk to Maggot once again. Talk to Maggot once again. I already know that paragraph. I read it twice. All right. The healer has joined. The dwarf is running around outside as per usual. I also have a feeling that by the time Gimli gets into this game, his design will be exactly the same as this dwarf. If I walk in here with the healer. There it is. Farmer Maggot calms the dogs so the healer may pass. The healer is leaving the fellowship. Now plot is happening. The very specific ways tasks must be done is kind of frustrating. The healer crushes leaves in steaming water and bathes the wounds. I, I think we got uh, some king's foil going on here. There's a sweet fragrance and the wound, uh, a sweet fragrance and the wounds close and heal. Do you wish to cross here? Yes. You have crossed the Brandywine. The ferryman returns to the other side. No, I just crossed. Old Tom Cotton. Hello, Mr. Frodo. A, ple a pleasure to see you again. I hear you went and moved from Bag End. Now you just settle down in Buckland, Mr. Frodo, and don't worry about the news. 
and stay out of the old forest. Now that's a right strange place, I reckon. By all accounts, people go in there and never come back. Rose Cotton seems very glad to see Sam Ganji. I got a present for you, especially since you're going to be spending a lot of time helping Mr. Frodo move into Buckland. Evil men in black cloaks are riding around. Same exposition. And it's the same lady as every other lady. They designed exactly one girl hobbit. Rose's token. That should definitely go to Sam. Esmeralda Took. <laughs> There's a ghost in the library and no one gets in till he goes away. <laughs> okay, well we have a we have an old hobbit lady design. So this version of Esmeralda is uh, much is old. Um okay. Um Esmeralda talks to her father-in-law in the book and that's like her one appearance at the party. So what do I know of ghosts except that no one with the right mind should go near one? I'm busy. Such tawful questions. Aside from that ghost, nothing of consequence. Now stop that gossiping. No good could come of it. So maybe I did need to get that other ghost, Ruby, in order to trap this ghost. But that just seems like so much work. Oh, the horse is facing the ghost. I'm sure a lot of these things are little things that'll help me on the quest but are completely optional so if i get completely stuck i'll consult some sort of uh <laughs> walk through yes esmeralda brandy buck esmeralda took brandy buck is a terry jones character this looks like the way to the old forest okay so i guess i gotta deal with this ghost to get the key to the gate to the old forest there's just so much empty space it's like Epcot, like the stuff that's there is good, but you got to walk through so much nothing to get between it. Interesting news. Loco Pimple has been making some strange friends. Big folk have put a strange machine in the mill, but I already destroyed that machine. <laughs> if I can't say no good about someone, then I'll say nothing at all. The smell of ale is too much for Drew, and he goes into the bar and will journey no further with you. Well, I lost Druin. So Mary can take his stuff. Does the bartender have anything to say? I think that human woman over there is a witch. Avoid her. The pony is Scooby. Uh, Frodo is Freddo. Sam is Shag. Uh, Mary and Pippin, their names don't alliterate to uh, Daphne or Velma, but... You know what these big folk are like? Witches, witches and wizards, all of them. So you just assume all big folk are witches. Maybe the witch can help us with the ghost. Ethelwyn. I know thy purpose. I was trained by the White Council and will serve thee. Okay, uh, we have a witch from the White Council. Oh, I got Druin again. Okay, so... Um, Ethelwine, Ethelwine. Oh, you have an unlock spell, so maybe I don't need to deal with the ghost at all. Come on, Frodo. Me and Pippin are going to Menchie's to get some Froyo. Then we're going to go see Hunchback of Notre Dame and enjoy Tony J as Frollo. Frodo, Frollo, Froyo, get your adverbs here. Ooh, new cutscenes! <laughs> you have escaped the Shia, but will you ever come home? <laughs> You escape just in time, for in the Shire. Are we getting the Fatty Bulger scene? Yep. Fatty Bulger stayed behind to impersonate Frodo. <laughs> we didn't really um, show that happening at all, uh, especially because uh, he was going to do this in Brandy Hall, uh, which is full of ghosts. Then as Fatty stared alone into the gloom, a greater horror than he imagined possible descended on him. <laughs> I like this, like, hiding Patty Bulger. Yep, it's a Black Rider. Technically blue, but, you know. The Black Shadow came through the trees and through the garden. There was a blow. Soft but heavy, and the door shuddered. Open in the name of Mordor, said a voice thin and menacing. <laughs> 
NFTs have come to the Shire. <laughs> the, the the mind of machines and wheels is really that crossed my mind. What if it's ghosts instead of barrel whites? Somehow I have a feeling this game will do both. Somehow I have a feeling we're going to get Barrow Whites proper uh, now that we're going into the old forest. But uh, we shall find out, won't we? <laughs> this is peak 90s DOS game animation, and I am here for it. <laughs> The Black Riders broke down the door with a second blow, only to find the house was empty. Fatty Bulger had fled for his life, sounding a distress call with his horn. That had not been heard in a century. Awake! A fear! Fire! Foes! Awake! Let's get the surprise Fatty meme to be the new surprise Pikachu. The Black Riders rode like a gale to the North Gate. Let the little people blow their horns. Sauron will deal with them later. It's fun that we're getting some uh, some verbatim narration from the text. Meanwhile, they had another errand. They knew now the house was empty and the ring had gone. They rode down the gods at the gate and vanished from the Shire. And so Sauron pursued his ring with the most powerful weapons he had at his disposal. Pikachu versus Patrick versus Fatty in a no-holds-barred death match. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the exact same patch of Old Forest, and with Gandalf mysteriously missing and death seeming, seeming at every turn, the company of the ring pressed on into the unknown, into darker danger. But we have a witch now.